So, how are you? How are you doing? Okay? Good? If I could raise an... Oh, I'd love to be able to raise an eyebrow. Or just gave a bit of a pause to give you kind of permission to say a bit more. How are you? I guess there could be a whole list of things. You might say, I'm 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 feeling very relieved at the moment. It's just, you know, the future looks a bit brighter. I'm I'm looking forward to going and seeing some folk I haven't seen for some time. I'm looking I'm loving talking to my friends more. But for many of us there's still those lingering anxieties. Just don't know what the future's gonna look like. I'm a bit confused about what I can do and what I can't do. I'm fed up, really. It's been going on for so long. And I'm worried. Worried about my children, my parents, money, my job, housing. I need a holiday, but I'm not sure I can get away. And so on and so on. For once, it's not hard uh, to make a list of what people are probably thinking about at this time. Whenever I ask my daughter, she just says, stuff. One word to sum it all up. Stuff. Certainly uh, not described as we heard in the epistle reading, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. But what we're being told here is that when we struggle to pay attention, to concentrate, to be patient with people, struggle to sleep through the whole night, to trust in God. That struggle is not just against the things that we can see and touch and hear about. It's also a spiritual struggle. And it's against forces of evil. So the remedy is also spiritual. The prescription which is being handed out for the situation here, um, well, it might not be a metaphor that we use, armour, but perhaps you can think of some form of protection that you use, some defence that you put on. It might be a raincoat. We've needed that just recently, haven't we? Uh, that, that saying that there's no such thing as bad weather, there's just inadequate clothing. Hmm. But, you know, sports people wearing things like shin pads, motorcyclists wearing a crash helmet, those are forms of protection that we can understand. So Paul talked about armour. We think about other defences, things that we wear, things that protect us. And what's being suggested here in the letter? Truth. Right living. Telling the good news. Faith. And salvation. During the last 18 months, I and my husband, we've been saying morning prayer and compline for the parishes and for ourselves as well, really. It's been a tremendous strength especially reading through all those psalms. And I noticed how often they refer to the enemies and the adversaries that we have to contend with. And I guess in the times that they were first told, the psalms that is, there was skirmishes and battles and violence all around. But I don't think the language is just literal language, enemies and adversaries. And certainly I found it very useful to think of enemies as the things that attack me. The enemy of anxiety, for example, that wakes me up in the middle of the night and I just can't stop worrying. Or the adversary of doubt. And I begin to wonder if our church will ever look like a living organism again. These are not unreasonable worries and anxieties. There's no point in saying, cheer up, it may never happen. 
because the worst could happen and already has. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard to have faith, hard to trust, hard to believe in Jesus who describes himself as the bread of life, the one thing that we need to keep going. We want to be comforted. We want to be wrapped around in something soft and warm. We want perhaps someone else to take away the difficulties and do it for us. It sounds offensive to be told. The while the reason for the anxiety, the depression, the worry, while the reasons for those are real, this is a spiritual matter. And the response that's appropriate for us lies in our relationship with God. When Jesus said these words, it's no wonder that some people left. So I'd rather look forward rather than looking back at all the things I've done wrong in the last 18 months. Looking forward, preparing for the future. And it doesn't matter that we don't know exactly what that future is going to look like. The details are not half as important as preparing ourselves by protecting ourselves from whatever happens in this spiritual battle. We need to protect and equip ourselves. What was it, the list we were told? Things like faith, speaking about the good news of Jesus, sharing words of truth, living as Jesus would want us to live. We can go back and look at that list of protective clothing. And I suppose you could say there's no such thing as a global crisis, just the wrong clothing. Though that would sound harsh, wouldn't it? It's reassuring to know that it's God's power and God's strength that we're calling on here, not our own. And we can pray. As the Collect for Peace says, we pray for protection. Let's pray that now. O oh God, the author and lover of peace, whom to know is eternal life and to serve is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, against all assaults of our enemies, that, trusting in your defence, we may not fear the power of any adversary, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.